Everybody with a zoom camera likes to photograph the sun, the moon, and the stars. It doesn't take long to realize that they move out of your frame very quickly. So if I want to keep Venus in the frame for any length of time, I'm going to need some extra equipment. I need a tripod and an equatorial mount. I've got to make sure the EQ mount is level and it has to be elevated to my current latitude. I adjust mine to 33 degrees because according to the ball model, Phoenix is 33 degrees north of the equator. And finally, I need a motorized astral mount. I can set it to follow the stars, the sun, or the moon. As long as its axis of rotation is aimed directly at Polaris, I can aim the camera at any luminary and it will follow its course around the North Star. In this case, it's been following Venus this entire time. The motor in the astral mount simply rotates on an axis at the same speed the luminaries rotate around Polaris. So as long as the astral mount axis is aligned with Polaris, the attached camera will follow any luminary you aim it at. So what's this got to do with the globe Earth? Well, if you'll remember, I set my EQ mount at 33 degrees because, according to the globe model, Phoenix is 33 degrees north of the equator. Remember also that it must be level to the ground I'm standing on. Well, if I'm at 33 degrees north and level the EQ mount, the astro mount scope is pointing here. But when I raise the mount to 33 degrees, it points here. How could Polaris be centered in the scope when it's not even close to where the scope is pointing? And what makes it worse is that anyone around the world can do the same thing, day or night, because Polaris is always in the same place. So while I have Polaris centered in my scope in Phoenix, someone else can have it centered in their scope on the other side of the world. For example, somebody at 33 North in India could also level his EQ mount, adjust the elevation to 33 degrees, and he'd also have Polaris centered in his scope. But neither scope could be centered on Polaris in the globe Earth model. And it doesn't matter if you're at 75 north with the scope elevated to 75, at 10 north with the scope elevated to 10, or on the equator with the scope level and set to zero elevation. Parallel lines are never going to converge no matter how far away you imagine Polaris to be. And it's even worse if the accounts of seeing Polaris from south of the equator are true. And please don't be fooled by diagrams like this. They're very misleading. They show people that are 100 times taller than Mount Everest looking way down below their feet level to see their horizon. These kind of diagrams put it in your mind that you can see around the ball Earth and be able to see the sun, the moon, Polaris, or whatever way down here. But that's nonsense. Look at this guy. Imagine his feet standing on a level Earth. All right? His feet will be pointing. His toes are pointing way over here. There is no way anyone has ever looked below their feet to see the horizon. All right, the horizon is always up here. It's not gonna be below his feet. Um, this one here, while it's not accurate, it makes my point, all right? Because we've got a six foot tall guy here. We can see his line of sight. We can see that in three miles is where his horizon is. All right, so imagine that is the polar scope right there with the astromon on it. So we've got our, we're standing on the equator here, and we've got our polar scope leveled 
to our feet level to the ground we're standing on all right and as we're looking at Polaris we're barely skimming by the edge of the earth our horizon and Polaris is just right at our horizon way over here centered in a scope all right now they want you to believe imagine this this curved ball here if we followed it all the way around and made a complete globe out of it or a complete circle they want us to believe that Polaris is over here you know dead center with uh, 90 degrees north and that this guy with this line of sight can somehow see Polaris way over here but he can't and this diagram shows it right here because this guy can't even see the other six foot guy at six miles away he's below his line of sight so if his if he his sight cannot curve down and see this guy it sure as heck isn't going to curve continue to curve down and see Polaris way over here in his sight Polaris has to be here off the side of the ball not around the center of it but look you don't even have to take my word for it here is Metabunk right there the geniuses and this is one of their moderators named Trailblazer but he drew a diagram that's basically the same as what I drew and showed earlier if a guy is at 40 degrees north he's gonna crank his polar scope up to 40 degrees elevation and he'll be looking dead at Polaris if the guy is 10 degrees north he's gonna crank it up to 10 degrees elevation he'll be looking dead at Polaris same with 30 degrees same with 50 degrees because He's basically saying Polaris is straight above this, straight above this, straight above this, this, this. And if there's another guy on the other side of the world at 10 degrees, he's going to be looking straight up here too. So how can both of them, how can the guy over here at 10 degrees north and the guy over here at 10 degrees north, both have Polaris centered in their scope when they both are looking out in this direction in their, their lines of sight? Are forming parallel lines or we can even just take we can take this guy at 10 degrees and this guy at 30 degrees these lines of sight are never going to converge no matter how far you want to put Polaris up here this guy can have Polaris centered in his scope right now as can this guy and this guy and this guy but they can't all be looking at Polaris because they're all parallel lines so just to reiterate Big H's line of sight is here. As such, he cannot even see little H a mere six miles away. So there is no way Big H is going to be able to see Polaris way over here. On the flat earth map, if you're right here, you elevate your mount to 90 to see Polaris. If you're here, you'll elevate it to 80 degrees. If you're here, you'll elevate it to 50. And if you're in Phoenix, you'll elevate it to 33 degrees elevation. And so on until you get to a point that you are so far away, Polaris appears to be on the horizon. It's the same principle as seeing the sun, moon, or even clouds set on our horizon from our perspective because they are moving farther away from us in the case of Polaris it is the person who as he moves farther away from the center point of the flat earth he is farther away from Polaris and the angle of perspective diminishes to a point that it seems Polaris is right on the horizon or even out of sight 